This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to show you how you can properly use cancellation tokens in ASP.NET Core and .NET in order to cancel requests before they waste precious resources on your VM or your database. Cancellation tokens is one of those things I see wrong all the time and people are not using them when they should be or they're not using them properly or passing them down properly to the very bottom of the chain and in this video I want to talk about all that and give you an example on an API level, on a console app level and how you can make your own cancellation token sources and manage all that yourself as well. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the seven notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? I have a simple API that has an example controller and this example controller has an I example repository injected into it and then we call a get some numbers async method in that repository and we're returning that value back and if I go in that repository you can see that it's using um, SQLite to make a call to SQLite actually two calls the first and the second result and don't get confused by this this is just a fake long-running operation but it still executes on the SQLite context it just so it can actually stress my CPU and give um, the idea of something underperforming in a sense and then it's doing it twice and then it's aggregating or actually summarizing the result and returns it back and that's it um, and if I am to actually run this to show you how it works I'm gonna debug it and go to postman and I'm gonna call that endpoint and as you can see this will take some time it will take approximately eight seconds four for the first and four for the second call and then return zero which is the added number for both of those requests so as you can see 8.56 so that's fine this shows you that you might be calling something that actually takes a long time but here's the thing and i have logging to actually demonstrate this better if i go to postman run this request and then cancel it which simulates someone cancelling the request or clicking away from the website and they don't want it anymore you can see that both the first result is being returned and the second even though someone cancelled well wouldn't it be nice if i knew that someone cancelled and i didn't even dealt with that second request or even cancel the one i have under a query right now you know because you might have a big result set iterating over it and calling the database over and over again to get the whole result set back well, we actually do have that. In Web API, we actually support cancellation tokens out of the box. And some people still call it Web API. It's, I think it's called SP.NET Core actually now, but in any controller in the ASP.NET Core context, you can actually add a cancellation token argument, and then you can take the token and pass it down to operations that you wanna be cancelable. And for example, the example repository in the command definition does support, as you can see here, a cancellation token, which means that I could add it as a parameter in that method and then also in the interface itself and pass it down. And by doing that, the command definition will use that when I'm making the call to notify the system that something was canceled and exit early before it actually wastes any of our resources. And I can supply the token here. Now, the token itself doesn't have a cancel mechanism. It has a cancellation token source, which we're gonna see in more detail in the console application. And that is what's driving the cancellation. And then it's up to the library that is accepting that token. In this scenario, it is SQLite to actually do something with it and cancel if they notice that it's actually canceled. So now with that in place, I can go back and execute this. And first I'm gonna properly call the API. I'm not gonna cancel anything. So I'm gonna call that, wait the eight seconds and see that it actually works and within change anything in the expected behavior this all should work fine again it returns but now if i click that and i cancel and i go back you'll see that the thing gets back to me and says boom uh there was an exception a task was cancelled and now it doesn't even call the thing a second time that's because the cancellation token in that library is being handled it's being seen as a cancelled cancellation token and it throws to let you know that, hey, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Now, it's up to you to how you want to handle that. And not all libraries will handle this in the same way. Some of them will return this, um, where is it? Let me, let me find it. Yeah, task cancelled exception. Some of them return an, um, let me just delete that, an operation 
cancelled exception. It depends on how you cancel the, the operation. But for now, in this scenario, you will just wrap this in a, a try catch and then catch for that exception. And I'm not going to throw here. I'm just going to... Um, you can log this if you want. I'm not going to do anything. Instead, I'm going to say console.writeline operation was cancelled. Save resources. Yeah. And I'm going to paste that in there. And we can return here. And if it's nothing, then you can handle that on your own if you want to return something. Um, you might want to turn something different and then take that and handle it and say, you know, 400 requests was cancelled or something like that. We're not going to talk about that now. All we want to talk about is we are handling the task cancellation exception. So if I go here and I run this and then I go to Postman and I click to send and I can see that the first thing is being called. See, first result is being called and I'm going to cancel that now. Operation was cancelled, save resources. So we never called that second operation. We saved resources in not stressing the database for something that nobody wants to see. And on the application itself, because it's not doing any operation, it's not handling any data, other requests can use those resources. So this is how you would use it in an ASP.NET Core context. Now, not every library is accepting it, but the vast majority of the properly implemented libraries that do some IO operation will definitely use it. Dapper supports it through the command uh, definition. Uh, libraries like the Cosmos DB SDK, AWS SDKs, all of them support it. So if something accepts it, then pass it down. Obviously, make sure you're handling that cancellation gracefully because cancellation might not be applicable on every single context, but when it is, it will really make a difference. Now, this is all on the API level, and a lot of work was already done for us by Microsoft by supplying this cancellation token, and our responsibility is just to pass it down. Now, what happens if you're not using a web API or an ASP.NET Core application, and you want to have your own cancellation token? But before that, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions of people like you and me come together to take the learning experience to the next level. As someone who has solely focused on sharpening their backend software engineering skills over the years, I feel that my front-end skills and anything related to web design is holding me back from creating my own full-stack projects. Skillshare has thousands of classes on web development, web design, and UX for all skill levels, so you can rest assured that you will definitely find something to learn from. I personally had an interest in learning more about user experience and taking Marik Makowski's intro to UX Fundamentals of Usability was an eye-opening experience for something I used to take for granted. With an annual subscription that is less than $10 a month, you gain access to thousands of ad-free classes curated specifically for learning, with new premium classes launching all the time. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So take the next step in your creative journey and click that link in the description for your free trial. What happens if I want to say token equals new cancellation token? Well, it doesn't quite work like that because the cancellation token itself cannot be cancelled. The cancellation token is a byproduct of something called the cancellation token source. So if I create that equals new cancellation token source, then that source can provide us with a cancellation token. And then I can say token equals that. And then on the cancellation token source, not the token, I can say cancel. Or I can say cancel after and give it a timestamp. And after a specific time, like treat it as a timeout of it effectively. So if something takes more than, uh, let's say, 10 seconds, automatically cancel it. And as long as the token is passed, the operation will be canceled. Now, there's multiple ways, like I said, to do that. The token itself has an is cancellation requested property, which you can you read and you can do something like while cancellation um, is not requested, then do something. And when it is requested, then you exit out of the while loop. Another approach is to use the uh, throw if cancellation requested. So if someone presses cancel on the token source, then you can have this line maybe as part of some loop again and throw to exit early if cancellation was requested. I'm going to show you a few examples here that I already created and then talk you through them. The first one is this example with the loop. So I have a background task running so I can actually press the C key and trigger a cancellation token 
cancel on the source here so it doesn't actually um, block this operation and then I have the token and I say if the cancellation is not requesting the token wait for three seconds on, on that task.delay and then when that is requested it will say token cancelled go out of the loop and it's very very important to actually dispose the token source this is critical you can use a using statement but if you're using the cancellation token source in more elaborate scenarios it's very hard to use the using statement so remember to actually dispose it when you're done with it and then up here i'm gonna say i wait example with loop and pass the cancellation token source change this to an async task and run this application and again let's see what we're running you're gonna see that this is doing some work for three seconds um, for those of you who have might noticed already the task.delay does actually support a cancellation token to be passed um, as an overload we're gonna talk about that in a second don't worry but this is just showing how you can use it with the ease cancellation requested now if I press C and I'm gonna do that now you're gonna see that the task was cancelled it's gonna wait for the predetermined amount of three seconds and then it's gonna cancel the loop and exit the loop and print the token was cancelled and we exited the loop so this is a graceful way to handle that and nothing was thrown here uh, that being said we could very much pass the token here if we wanted to cancel mid delay and to actually show this a bit more I'm gonna change that to 10 seconds let me change that to 10 as well and if I debug this again now this will wait for 10 seconds but I'm gonna press C now and the task was cancelled the moment I press C we did not wait for this to actually finish and then check again if it's cancelled and exit gracefully but doing so will throw the task cancelled exception from the task.delay so this is why I said it can actually uh, work a bit differently based on what you're doing the outcome is not quite the same because instead of waiting from the predetermined amount of delay that we set we pass the cancellation token and the moment we cancel it's that moment that we get the exception and we don't spend a millisecond more to actually wait for that to be uh, completed before we check that it's cancelled and exit so that's another way to do it now the third way to do it like I said before is the throw if cancelled and normally such a thing you wouldn't do um, while you're checking the cancellation requested you would usually have something like while true so an infinite loop here and then some operation I'm gonna put like five seconds here and again I'm removing it to show that you know you have a long-running uh, thing going on here and then we're doing some work for five seconds but then we're gonna say cancellation token uh, through the source and then uh, throw if cancellation requested so this is another way to actually make the token throw if someone cancels it and throwing will actually exit the loop we can also have a try catch around that to see what is being thrown from that method because that's going to be uh, interesting and with that out of the way it's going to throw it's going to exit um, we're going to remove that and then it's going to say exit the loop through the cancelling so let's run this and see how it reacts so we're going to wait for another iteration to see actually how this acts we're going to press c now so i cancelled it said cancel the tax but it's still waiting because the thing wasn't cancelable and now it says operation was cancelled operation cancelled exception which is different from the other exception that we saw before which was the task cancelled exception so this is one of the differences depending on how you're cancelling you might have to deal with one exception or the other or neither depending on how you want to deal with this scenario so we saw three ways the manual way the throw if cancelled way or the I'm passing it down to something that can actually use it to cancel something like this delay or the SQLite um, SDK approach ultimately you have to pick what makes sense for your software so I cannot tell you that this is the best this is the best this is the best there's multiple ways uh, to go about it but what's very important is to understand that the cancellation token source needs to be managed properly for something like that maybe on a scoped context and then pass down the token for that cancel on the source and always dispose don't forget that that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well you're gonna find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding